equation. Okay, now let's let's try to interpret this. Okay, so if we just look at the job satisfaction uh, coefficient, it's 0.857. Okay, so what that's saying to us is this: is that a unit increase okay, in job satisfaction okay, will induce an increase of 0.857 units in in intention to in the intention to stay variable. Okay, so I mean that's actually quite a big increase that job satisfaction is is let's say is 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 transferring across to the to the dependent variable. So that's actually good. Let's have a look at gender. Now let's keep in mind that our gender variable has two categories. Okay, you're either female or you're male. We coded up the females and the males. Let's just go back into our into our data set. Okay, we coded up the females as zero and the males as one. Okay, so actually what this is telling us here is something really interesting. Yeah, is that the coefficient is minus 0.144. Okay, so let's say we have you are male. That means your 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 value is a one. So that means that that's going to be minus 1.44 times one, which means it's it's going to actually have a reduction effect in relation to your intention to stay. So actually, when we baseline this off the base case, which is females, which are coded up of zeros, yeah, being male reduces your intention to stay by minus 0.144 units, okay, relative to the females, okay. Uh, in a similar way, when we have a look at age dumb one and age dumb two, okay, age dumb one, don't forget the way we coded that, age dumb one, uh, the age dumb one variable, okay, represents whether you're under 30 years of age. If it's a one, you're under 30 years of age. The base case is the zero, so it's always been compared against this zero and not under 30 years. And what that's saying to us here, when we look at the, when we look at the results, okay, is that being in the age dumb one category, increases your intention to stay by 0.2 by 0.2 units and similarly being in the age dumb 2 category which is being between 30 and 50 years of age increases your intention to stay within the organization by by 0.227 okay so actually being in neither of the categories yeah okay uh, doesn't have well being in neither of the categories it doesn't have an effect in other words if you're 50 plus years not that it doesn't have an effect you can actually see that what these are really saying is being in one of these categories relative to the 50 plus year category yeah there is a positive increase okay so let's just keep that in mind and finally what's really important for us is the significance values here that are associated with these particular these particular coefficients okay now by default, I suppose when we look at when we look at coefficients, there is a null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis associated with coefficients. The null hypothesis being that actually the variable doesn't have an effect. Okay, in other words, the coefficients should be zero. The alternative being that the variable does have an effect, in which case the the coefficient will not be zero. Now we can see that job satisfaction is 0.857. Okay. Is that a real value? Well, what we're saying here is it is statistically significant, which means that there's evidence to suggest that this value, that the, the true, that the true population value is not zero. Okay? In which case, there's evidence to suggest that we can actually trust this particular value here. But when we look at gender and age dumb one and age dumb two, we haven't achieved statistical significance. In other words, there isn't any evidence to suggest that these values are not different to zero and actually that the real values with respect to the population that this sample has been drawn from, yeah, that the real values uh, are zero. There's no evidence to suggest that, that they're not zero, if that makes sense. Which is slightly different to saying that they are zero. Okay, let's keep that in mind. But what's what would be nice to see is that when we have coefficients, okay, that we've also achieved statistical significance with respect to our coefficients. And in this case, we we have achieved statistical significance with respect to job satisfaction, which has a 0.857, uh, I suppose, unit unit effect in relation to intention to stay. So one unit increase in relation to job satisfaction will result in a 0.857 unit increase in relation to uh, your intention to stay within the organization.
And uh, now guys, I do accept that that's a lot sort of to, to take on board, but like the way we did it with a simple linear regression model where we just had one dependent variable and one independent variable, okay? It's important just to go through these boxes, one box at a time, and not to be overwhelmed by all of the output, okay? The interpretation is exactly the same when it comes to a multiple regression model, okay? Where we have more than one independent variable. But let's just keep in mind what's really, really important, which is a criteria associated with running a multiple linear regression model, uh, is that our independent variables are measured uh, that they're continuous or that they're dichotomous. In other words, that they're measured on an interval or ratio scale, okay, or they're measured or that they're measured uh, as, as, or that they're coded up as nominal or ordinal variables uh, where they only have two levels of measurement associated with them. Okay? So guys, once again, uh, my name was Jonathan. My name is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland, and I hope this short video, uh, which which dealt with how to generate a multiple linear regression model uh, using SPSS statistics, I hope that this was some way, uh, in some way, uh, intuitive, and more importantly, I hope it was. I hope it was helpful for you. And once again, uh, thanks for watching.